It's Yo PJD back with a video. I see a lot of these videos and it made me realize that I fall into this category. But I don't want this video to feel somber like some of those videos do because I don't think it always has to be that way. What do I mean? All right, I'm 40 and I don't have any friends. I realize that. I live in Atlanta, not from Atlanta. I've been here for years, but I've kind of bounced around and I kind of stayed to myself. Two of the guys I knew when I first moved down here that I consider very close friends, I'm not cool with anymore at all. Like one of them I would consider almost the enemy the way things ended the other well both both were all, both really felt like enemies the way things ended one ended ended due to him being involved in the demise of my relationship with a woman I really saw a future with and it's funny because I did a lot, like I'm a guy that goes by the bro code, not in a negative way, but in the bro code of just like, yo, whatever you need, bro, I got you. Especially if you got a girl, you trying to make it work, I got your back. Like, I'm not trying to put you in no position to make you look crazy or have you out doing something you ain't supposed to be doing. That ain't me, you know? Uh, I'm rolling out the red carpet when you come through with your girl, making, making you look, making you look good, making you look like a big dog, right? But he was found out he was talking bad about me to her. Like, not to say I was perfect. I ain't saying I was perfect at all. Like, I was young, man. I was trying to figure it out. She was from out of state. I'm just trying to get my bearings a little bit. I'm playing sports all the time. I'm working a lot. She didn't have any, she didn't have any friends. And so for this guy, like, who had this younger woman that like he was really trying to hold and like doing things I didn't agree with but it, I didn't overstep it's not my place maybe that's the life she want you know she want to be controlled like that I wonder how they are doing now I wonder how she's doing now I might look for her and reach out to her and I don't owe him not not the way he got down with me but just she was a, a sweet girl and I know that they, they had a few kids and I hope their kids are doing well I hope she's doing well I hope he's doing well, but for, for a while, I realized he was just like a taker, a user, and just, it's one of those people that just wanted everything to be about him and him in the limelight, him with all the money and the, like, look at me, look at me. But then he would turn around and try to base it in, on, on like God and religion and try to throw religion in, in the book in, in in his favor and his benefits like that that part I'll just be a good person dude like I get it like you're not just because you're on a different path a different walk where you're trying to be on that walk don't mean you're better than anybody else if anything when you do stuff like that you, you're probably turning people off that would join you if you found a way to convey that message without looking down and try to shun people, you know? It's a different way to do it. That's not what Jesus did. I ain't come here to preach to y'all right now. Maybe I will though. <laughs> and then the other guy that used to be my buddy, we went to high school, you know? That was my dog, I felt like. I always gave him the benefit of the doubt in situations, even though I thought there were things about him that were questionable at times but after meeting his folks and just seeing it he was like somebody just seemed reliable and just maybe was misunderstood I thought we was cool but I think when you get to a point where you know you've been friends for a while this this relationship this friendship taught me that sometimes friendships end right 
and like I didn't even look at that's why I say I don't have no friends too like cause I'll get right to it like if you cool you're my bro like you're my brother that's how I look at it that's how I treat people like if we down you my dog like it's friends is like somebody like friend of a friend like if you my man's man then you my friend you my bros bro you're my friend that's why I keep it and I don't have a lot of those <laughs> I don't hit those guys up to hang. The guys I hang with, my guys, whether it be OGs or <laughs> my young boys now. Somebody called me Unk over the weekend. I didn't even realize I'm Unk now. That's crazy. Like, when did I become Unk? <laughs> I guess when I shave my beard and I seen all these grays come out. I don't even try to pull them out no more. Just had to give in. But, uh, yeah, this dude from high school, man, like, we, we lived together on two separate occasions. One of the occasions I found out a lot. And, uh, you know, I ain't the type to put people business out there, but you know what people do, that's on them. That ain't got nothing to do with me. I always been like that. Because at the end of the day, I'm just trying to figure it out too. And I ain't got time to judge nobody. <laughs> One of my first relationships out of college, I remember she used to be like, you judging me, you judging me. I'm like, no, I'm not. Like, and it always made me not want to judge. I could have my own preferences. I could set my own boundaries. That don't mean I'm judging you. This might not be for me, but yo, you like it, have at it. I ain't got to love it. You like it, you love it, have at it. It don't got nothing to do with me until it got something to do with me. And then we have the boundaries and the preferences. But uh, when he lived with me, you know, it was times was hard for me. So I'm not going to say that everything I did, I think we could have had more communication. And maybe we were in this place where like, I, I, my financials wasn't the best back then. I was working hard, though. Like you couldn't, you, one thing about me, you could say, like, if I'm ever down financially or in a space, it ain't because of lack of effort, you know what I'm saying? Or trying to get back right or get to the money. <laughs> so, you know, when that part of us living together, we just wasn't a good fit living together too. So I think the stress of that and being friends and expecting like, you go to your friend's house is always one way. Then when you live together, I'm like, yo, we, got, we don't live the same to come to certain things. I'm trying to run an at-home business at the same time. It just was no bueno. And it was it was a good idea for us to part ways. That part didn't really affect our friendship, I don't think. I think we still hung out there then. Maybe not as much. But um, time go on. This We both from, both from Maryland then. Then we go to D.C. We both in D. We was both in Maryland then. Then we both in Atlanta. Not sure how that happened. But, uh, like when I say this with my brother, man, I remember he called me, his mother was in a tragic car accident. I dropped everything. I left my, my. I was probably at work. I, I left work, went home, grabbed a bag, got in the car, I think that same day. I think I might even have to rent a car. I don't even think I had a car then. And I went to go help and support and be with my boy, trying to help him out, because it's a lie. He ain't had no, he had brothers and sisters, but I, don't, I think everything was pretty much on him when he did the, you know, the arrangements, and it just was. I remember that day. I remember that day. I remember that funeral. I don't remember many funerals, and and I've been to a bunch more than I care to, but it, it, it always comes a point for me. It's like you come in, and you see, I think I just black out. I don't handle that well. I'm not theatrical, but I don't handle that well. Let me move the story along. Like with this guy, my friend, I, we lived together in, in Atlanta and you know, I thought things were cool. We were working things in a way that I thought were beneficial to us both, but us having different living styles came back, like, you know. Um, and it was in the time too when like financially he's been in um he picked a good career. So I think he's always had and, and his parents did well. So I think he's always I don't think money's ever been an issue for him like it was for me. Like high school I worked three jobs. 
I've always worked. I tried, you know, plenty of business, even in high school, plenty of businesses. Um, and he had business ideas too when we tried to partner up, but you know, I just didn't understand that tech space like he did. So he probably one of the first people I know that was get, getting into Bitcoin. I hope he kept some. He probably went crazy on Bitcoin. Probably a Bitcoin millionaire for real. Uh, but uh, yeah, man. If you don't have the same like lifestyles, you can't live with your friends. Like that means like cleanliness, going out, loudness, eating habits, like. A lot of that stuff going to play when you're living with your friends. Unless you got boundaries and different areas set up. Like we had two dogs. We had one thing we had in common was the gym. I will I do miss that. We used to go to the gym, like motivate each other. All right, bro, get up, get up. And you got that guaranteed spot. Somebody gonna make sure you eat, do the little things, push you through. That part was the best, the best part, part about us living together. That and having somebody watch your dog. We had dogs then. But uh, when things ended, I came home to a, a situation that I never shared. It's one thing to come home to the situation that I came to that day, him not being there. But it's another situation. The part that really bothered me was his lack of concern or empathy. I don't know if empathy is the right word. How nonchalant he was about it, because obviously I'm bothered, right? And I'm bothered in a major way because of the shock and the also now now I got a problem because you're trying to sweep it under the rug like it's not nothing. You couldn't. Like all you had to say was my bad, dog. I thought it was cool. Not giving me a reason like <laughs> you just in the guest room. Like we was living in this house that was basically him fixing it up. Probably cash, no mortgage, like life work mortgage. I don't know all the finances, but we in the hood. And the house was like just tore up. That's why I never buy a fixer upper. I don't care. It's, it's other ways to make money. I never buy a fixer upper. I might never not buy a house that's new if I'm looking for a house, to be honest. I don't ever want to go through that again. I'd rather have a new house and things come up and we fix that than to deal with somebody else's problems or deal with an old house. Nope. I can't even go to Goodwill really to buy clothes because can't find stuff my size. I'd rather just get something. I know I like my weight. But yeah, man, the way that ended just made me look at friendships different, man. Like, I don't even know if I really picked up so many new friends since then. And when I say friends, again, it's like the guys is bros with my bros. Like, those are the friends. I you know what? I did pick up bros guys that I got close to from the gym. But that really hasn't happened since I turned 35. I don't think I met anybody new that I've been cool with since I turned 35, since I moved out to the suburbs. My pattern, my lifestyle, gym, grocery store, church. That's about it. Now to the like, <laughs> the little indoor amusement parks and playgrounds. I tried to go out for Cinco de Mayo, like I said, and there's guys I thought about hitting, but like, when you're in different spaces of life, it's like, still cool. Might even still be bros, but it's different than like hanging those situations. So now I haven't, it kind of, I'm not gonna say it hurt me, but it was like a weird feeling because I'm somebody who was like, when I lived in DC, it was always people I could hit up to hang out with. When I first got down here, playing flag football, being out in the scene all the time, I could always hit guys, like I said, my age, all my OGs, great OGs down here. But you know, when you become unk, your OGs become even more OGs. Like, you know, it changes, man, it really changes. And so, one of my great OGs, he's back and forth between here and Jersey. Another one, you know, he's he lives close. Maybe I could have hit him up, but he, you know, he's in a relationship too. When I I don't like the overstep, especially in the holidays, I probably should have hit him up. Now that I think about it, we could have 
good talk and conversation. He my OG, but he be going hard in the paint. He got more energy than me. <laughs> Sometimes I be like, chill, big dog, chill. He be like, nah, let's party. I be like, whoa. <laughs> that's my man, though. But like I said, he's not a friend. Like That's like my big bro. It's like my big brother. I love that dude, man. Like, my bros, this is my bros. I love these guys, man. Like, they can call me. I'm not afraid to call me. My phone now don't do not disturb. If I see it, I'm going to ask you what you need, man. What can I do for you? You know, when it comes to whatever, if I got it, you got it. It's been my bros. When I say I got it, you got it, I really mean that, too. It's been my bros that ask me for money, loan, loan it. They say it's a long loan. I'm not looking, and I ain't looking for it back. I ain't on your back to get it back to me. That's on you to get it back to me. If you don't, that tells me how you feel about me, right? And that that determines the boundary. And there's been times my bros hit me for bread, and if I don't got it, bro, I tell them I don't got it. I'm trying to get it. That's what I'm doing to get it. If you know another way I can get it, let me know. But you know, the way stuff is, out here you really gotta be on it. But it was just a weird feeling, man, just to always have been out at one point. Like, when I first got to Atlanta, I'm out seven days a week. I go here, I know I'm seeing these spaces. We having drinks, we talking, we having conversations. We having a blast. I go to this place. Different, whole different genre, subsection of people, different conversations. I remember I was going to the cigar bar one night, might go to the salsa spot another night. You could do that in Atlanta, at least back then. I don't know what it's like now, but I like where I'm at now. I'm at peace with it. I enjoy it. I enjoy being a dad very much so. I wish I know a guy also in a situation similar to mine. I think he was married. He has two daughters that he has. The majority of the custody for. But I don't think we live in each, each, each other. And so I think he would be somebody good to hang with. Great guy. He's very well-spoken compared to me. Very well-spoken. Smart guy. Funny guy. He's got a bad deal with women. As I get more comfortable in this YouTube space and sharing, I feel like it helps me wake up now, so I might do that more. But maybe I'll get more comfortable sharing my thoughts on women and relationships from the things I've learned. So I've learned a lot. Still wanna get married. <laughs> it's funny to say that because at one point, you know, I I had the mindset that, you know, if I wanted to be married, I would. I could I could be married now. And that's true. Do would I have stayed married? I don't know. I don't know. And that's the thing I really want. More than I want to be married, I want to stay married because I've seen what happens when relationships go bad from the perspective of a child. Um, I was an older child, but it's still a child mentally. When I think about it, like, and that's okay to say, that's okay. And I seen it, you know, even though I wasn't legally married, but I was invested to the point that I don't think marriage would have changed a lot. Me, but, the, but you know, this woman, my son's mother, but, it would have complicated things in the demise, like with the paperwork and all that. But I, I, I see so many videos, and it's just so important when you marry. It's so important who you choose as your friends and your bros, man. That's what I want to say at the end of the day. I have no friends, but it's important to make sure you, the people that you do consider your friends, your bros, they're quality people. I got quality guys. Like my best friend, that dude is amazing. Best guy I know, man. 
best guy I know. Like he literally, like when I say he hit all the boxes for me, um, and not sound much, he got sound crazy, but like, man, work hard, man, take care of his family best he can, you know what I'm saying? Like over and above for his family. Uh, if I call him, he show up, he don't ask questions. If I got something I gotta get off chest, my chest, he listen, he know he can do the same with me. Put bread in my pocket, put money in his pocket, like, like it's friends you have, and like you can go into business with, and it's like one of the first questions they ask is, "What's the split? So how we doing the money?" That's not me, and that's not him, and I, and I appreciate that. Like, that's how you really know, at least me, how you really know you rock with somebody. That's just how I'm raised, how I get down, man. I ain't never taking advantage of nobody. Like, if I, like if I got it, you got it. It was a post on Instagram a couple of days ago. And they said, you know, if your friend or your best friend or somebody gave you money, gave you $5 to go play the lottery, or you seen know, you hit for a million, how much you giving them? Somebody give me $5 and I go hit for something big, I'm gonna give you half plus that five. So that's just how I feel, man. Like, Cause you put me in position to hit it, hit that number, this money just as much as mine as yours. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna give you what you gave me because that's the right thing to do. That's how I move. Well, I'm gonna keep all of it and just give you a small percentage. Ah, man. You my man, I'm gonna do that for what? Like, like if, cause if I don't give it to you, you're gonna be looking to me for it. <laughs> so why not just give it to you so you can enjoy it too, man? That's how I look at it. Like we can all eat. I got, I don't like going out with people that I buy a round and now I gotta hunt you down to get around like you're not offering like like nah man let's work together let's get it done let's put in let's let's go up man it's hard to find that that's why a lot of people don't find have friends man they it's people that's all about them I got another I got a group of quality guys you know in group chats with most of these guys are in the same area. Some are, but like people got lives going on too. So one of my good buddies, I guess he an OG, not super much an OG older than me, but you know, he got family, bunch of kids. That's my man. It made me sad because I can't really, I don't know if I feel comfortable rocking with him as much as I used to just because, you know, situations. And I'm trying to figure out life and dating because I want friends, I want a relationship with somebody to be with, man. It's just in Atlanta, that's difficult. Mm -hmm. But hopefully, it'll rock. A lot of my buddies play flag football with people spread out. I got a couple homies that need to live by. I need to reach out. That's what I'm gonna do, man. I don't have friends, I got bros. I need to reach out to my bros, especially to live local to me. And uh, maybe have them over the grill and chill, man, or just figure out a guy's night. Cause there's a lot of stuff too popping up on my feed talking about men need those guys nights. That's important, man. Having conversations with men it's the best way to get over a breakup I found. That's what's probably one of the number one things for me. Not the guys that's gonna tell you to go out there and chase women. The guys that make you think and tell you, you know, take your time, heal, make sure you're okay. <coughs> guys that check on you, that you know you're gonna make it through. Let's go. I'm gonna do a whole nother video on that. I ain't realized I've been talking for 30 minutes, man. 30 minutes, maybe less, but about that. Thank y'all for watching. I'm gonna wrap this one up because this bit a doozy, but this was therapeutic. This was, man, if you don't have no friends, that's not a bad thing, man. Have deeper relationships, have, have family. Family's everything. What I may lack in friends, I I more than make up for a family. I have the best family. 
Family is important. Family is love. Love is an action word. That's all I got, man. I'm hungry again. That's good. I'm gonna get some Chick-fil-A or something. I think I got some coupons, some points. I'm gonna holler at y'all because I am starving and I am still cooked. <laughs>